Welcome back to RTS. So glad you stopped by again today. I have really been working hard on the load event and load stands for layout a day and there'll be links below if you want to read more about it. It happens two or three times a year and I encourage you to look into it, uh, especially if you want to maybe get away from doing holiday and events for a while and focus on some stories or focus on a different way of using your product. So I'll have all the links below to that. So I can't believe it's day 17 of load layout a day. I can't believe I've done 16 for 16 and I've done a video for all of those 16 pages. So can I make it 17? I'm going to try to push myself. I've really been hopping, trying to get things done in life and trying to work on this, but I knew that going into it, I wanted to really push, my, push myself, get out of my comfort zone. And so today's prompt for load was throwback Thursday. And you know, in the social media world, that means you're v revisiting something back from the olden days or an old, something old. So that was the thing. It was to scrap an old photo which I had just did that a couple days ago, or use a retro embellishment or you know, use something old from your stash. And so I kept seeing the word old and I thought, okay, what could I do? I didn't want to do an old photo or an old story because I have just, I've kind of been doing that lately. So I thought of something that when we were in Charleston, uh, some of these elements that we kept seeing, um, with the wrought iron, the carriage steps, the cobblestone and things like that. So I thought, oh yeah, that's old, old architecture or old elements of architecture. So I thought that's what I'm going to do. And then I thought, well, let me go find some old product in my inventory and look what I found. And I knew I had this because I don't have a lot of vintage type product because I don't scrap a lot of vintage, but I knew I had this because I've had it for a long time. I've moved it in my room several times, but it's by Daisy D's. And I think this is called Attic, yeah, Attic Heirlooms Collection. Oh, love this. I still love it. And you know, honestly, Daisy D's went out of business in 2008. It is now year 2018. So at least 10 years old. This didn't come out in 2008 because they, they stopped manufacturing papers a little bit before that. So this is 10, at least 10 years old. And I still love it today as I did it when I bought it. So I guess my point I'm trying to say is if, if you buy a product and you love it, it doesn't matter what year you bought it. Hang on to it. If you love it then, you'll love it now and you, you'll use it. And I still love this collection. To me, this looks like something that would come out today. This looks like something that would come out on the market. Honestly, goodness, I have a stack and a half of it. So is it going to be easy to pick out papers? <sighs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try, ladies. I'm going to try my heart. So then I also thought, okay, so I'm going to use an old architectural element. I'm using old inventory, you know, older as in it's over 10 years old. Not old to me because, look, this is over, this is 10 years old. You would never know. These papers are in beautiful shape, like I said. I really take care of my, my inventory because we paid money for it. You treat it good and it'll treat you good. Okay, so then I thought, okay, old elements, uh, old inventory or as far as product. So I thought, let me just look at my old stash of sketches. So I got my binder out and I went back and I found one from 2008. <laughs> And this again is by Page Maps, and Page Maps had a problem with their website I think last year. So some of these earlier ones you can't find just yet; they're still trying to convert them. But I will link the Page Maps website below. And this, again, I'm going old school. I'm going to do a two-page layout. Can I? <laughs> can I handle a two-page layout? But I really just don't want to cut these photos down. And if I used all of these, well, right there is a 12 by 12. I, I, I couldn't get anything on there. So I'm, I'm definitely going to do a two-page layout. Well, I'm going to try to do a two-page layout. How's that? Okay. And I thought, you know, again, break out of your comfort zone, uh, two-page layout. But since I'm using six photos and they're four by six, it really won't be hard. And I found this two-page. I just need a few patterns. And then I thought, okay, guess what? Old school again. I picked out some old Fiskars punches. Yes, I did. I say Fiskars, some people say Fiskars, it don't matter, it's all good. So this reminded me of the architecture in Charleston and I even had this roller that's laying here. I may even get in some paper tearing. I don't know. So I am definitely going old school, old architecture, old product, old sketch, old punches. 
we're gonna see what we come up with so now I'm trying in my brain as I'm going through all this I'm trying to think of the word old in my title somehow but I just can't seem to think of anything and well you know right off the bat I have these now you knew I must have liked them I bought four of these so that means I probably bought two collections and I bought these twice so there's four but I like I said these are labels and labels never go out of style my friend so I just okay so you know what that means pull up my foam tape <laughs> it's like a crutch I pull up my foam tape because I know I'm gonna probably I'll probably have to use those as embellishments because I don't have anything else and I'm really kind of pushing a gun here as far as having time and so it also came with these these elements these die cuts which you know you could always use punches or die cuts I just don't have time for that there's these flowers okay and more so that's that's what I have to play with as far as embellishments okay so that's gonna be a possibility and I'm running out of room already so okay here's my photos so what do I have going on here and look at the stack I have Okay, I, how am I ever going to pick any papers? <sighs> I wish one of you were here helping me because <sighs> I don't know. So I looked. I definitely have brick. I have cobblestone. I have green. And of course, you know, the pavement color. So if I stick with the reds and the browns and the greens, that's how I do that. Of course, you know, this is, you know, I always say this. I apologize. Mood and feel. And so I know how I felt when I took these photos and I saw these because it was just like history coming back you know I it, it's just amazing and let me just ask a question right now when you go visit historical sites you know you and your family you go do that let me ask you a question do you sometimes get melancholy and I know this is gonna be weird so just stick with me but you know as beautiful as Charleston was and we enjoyed that day it was great it was it was wonderful to see like like this right here a carriage step you know what is that 17 18th century or something like that where you know these carriage steps were on the side of uh, you know on built on the side near the sidewalk and carriages and horses would you know pull up and that's how people would step up you know to get into the carriage or the horses you know to experience something like that is great okay but then how do you say this but there's also when you're visiting historical sites I get a sense of melancholy. I get a sense of sadness at times. And I hate to say that because, you know, it's wonderful that these things are preserved. But, you know, you have to think some of the things that happened in history was not, wasn't all good. Okay? The way people were treated, the way things happened, wars were started. And it gives me a sense of melancholy. And I try not to focus on that when I'm working on my pages. But it's always in the back of my mind that... You know, like, okay, for example, these these wall anchors that were in these homes, these little circular elements, that was because of an earthquake that they had to resort to that. And so, you know, and of course, you know, the, the whole history of wrought iron and things like that, it just, there's just a part of, I love to see historical, um, in, you know, structures and the history of it. And, you know, luckily, you know, my family does too, but there are times when I find myself melancholy. I find myself sad. I find myself getting a lump in my throat when I'm visiting these things. <laughs> Makes me sad to think about it, but <laughs> does anybody else get like that? And so I try not to translate it on my pages, but as I'm working on things, you know, some of these things are just kind of sad, but okay, moving on. So maybe I should just edit all of that out. I don't know, but I get sad sometimes when I'm visiting historical sites. And I try, I try not to focus on that aspect, but you know, that's the reality, you know, just because there's a landmark up doesn't mean it was all celebratory and you know what I mean? So I always, uh, yeah, I have that in the back of my, I think I'm just an emotional person, but you know, when I visit historical sites, I put myself back in that time frame. Like if someone my age, you know, what were they living? How were they dressing? What were they eating? What was their transportation? I mean, that's the whole reason why you visit these places, right? So I bring that forth along into my pages. And so, um, that's why I do the mood and feel. And so I, I will not try to uh, focus on that aspect on these pages. But again, that's just something that's always in the back of my mind. And I'm interested to know if you feel the same way when you visit sites like that. Do you get melancholy at times? Do you get sad? And then, uh, yeah. 
it wasn't just all happy times was it so okay moving on boy that took too long I'm sorry I probably will edit that out but okay so in my sketch I am going to pick out um, probably three or four patterns and uh, yes that's what I'm gonna do oh I have mats too hmm <clears throat> and I'm doing a two page so that's double the amount isn't it okay let's get cracking so again before I went on that tangent of being melancholy visiting historical landmarks um, I got brick I got cobblestone I got black I got green so I'll leave some of these colors out oh man yeah, Charleston definitely is beautiful okay, I can't say anything oh and there's so many b-sides well, right off the bat oh wow I can't sacrifice that big graphic Especially when you can no longer buy these papers anywhere. And some of these are thinner. Oh my goodness. Oh, wouldn't that look good? Oh, this is going to be so hard. I have no, no idea in the world how I'm ever going to. And you know, you're going to have to go by scale. That That's, that's a nice... That's kind of what I have in my brain. I really don't, I want to stay from away from the teal and aquas. To me, that's not part of the, the era. Uh, even though it's beautiful. Honest to goodness. Well, just slap me. I have a tablecloth exactly like that I bring it out in the fall. I kid you not. That is amazing. I wonder if that was just a replication of a tablecloth. You know, they do that with patterns. Yeah, that's the same one. They do that with patterns, honest to goodness. I hope this video didn't get too long already. Now, see, these papers are thin. I don't buy th th thin papers like this anymore. I do not. Because this just doesn't work with me. Because I'm going to have to back that with paper. No, oh, that's it. Yeah. Keep moving. I got a red, so let's do Okay, I got to focus on brown and some greens. Oh, this is not going to be easy. It's nice too. Getting away with the teal. Oh, I love that pattern. I mean, can you imagine the variety of topics that you can do? And I gotta get some of these photos out because you know this is my mood and feel. That's my in inspiration. Where's that one house? That one photo of the house that really inspired me. This one right here. I don't know what it is about that. I guess because it has all the elements. Okay, moving on. I didn't mean to go on to that tangent about, you know, getting melancholy when I visit historical uh, landmarks, but that's this that's the truth of it. I do. And, you know, sometimes I have to excuse myself and go to the bathroom and cry a little bit because it wasn't all fun and games. And, and you know what I'm talking about. I think I'm just, uh, oh, boy, that's beautiful. Oh, I could tell a story just right from that. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, this, some of these are heavier. So, I, I don't, I'm not going to say that every one of these papers are Daisy D's because I'm one of these type of people. If I see something that reminds me of a collection, I'll just go ahead and throw it in. Oh, my, that's pretty, but I didn't want to do that teal. But that's nice. Oh, well, no, mm -mm, mm -mm. there we go. There's going to be my key, that's going to be my key page right there. Oh, yes. Doesn't that just remind you of that time? Oh, I love this process. I just truly, truly do. And of course, I would love it even more today if I didn't have things I need to do, but... Oh, that's not real life, is it? Oh, there's a brown. Okay. I hope someone's screaming some... Pick that, pick that. No, don't pick that. Oh, I love these three already. But I think... See, I don't want to get too much pattern, but I'm going to need some mats. I'm getting excited. <laughs> I'm getting excited. And I don't scrap a lot of vintage. I, ju I just don't. It's, I'm more of the happy, bright, colorful. Um, and, you know, oh, well, I'm just going to stop there. I was going to have a raccoon thought about, do you scrap Do you scrap uh, according to your personality? But I'll, that's another whole video. I'll, I'll talk about that later. But interesting. When you scrap your personality, you'll be surprised at what you buy and what you don't buy because you're scrapbooking per your personality. I don't know if I could pull all four of those off. See, that's so much e that's so much alike in scale. These three would work good. This is too much in scale. Okay, scrapping that. So these are the three I'm going with. And I don't know if I can find any more solids. 
it was good that I said I wasn't going to do any teals. That helped me to stay away from some papers right off the bat. And there's some more elements. I don't know what that's there for. Oh, okay. Now this is exactly why I love this line. Well, of course you can tell, right? There's five sheets. No, make that six. <laughs> five or six of it. Because that is probably my one of my most favorite florals. Oh, and look at that brown. Oh. Mm -mm. Okay, one of those brands are going to go. That's just beautiful. I wonder if I could get that in anywhere. But now, see, if you would cut this down, like if you would do a border punch or something of that nature, either, well, any type of border punch, you're going to... You're not even going to know what that pattern is. That's Sometimes these are nice to use. Sometimes they're hard to use. Well, I'll just... Okay, that's my paper choices. That took way too long. I went off on three tangents, but... That's me. Lord. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to have to go with my... I needed one more paper, didn't I? Well... You know, I guess I could pull one of those. We're going to see. I, I don't have any washi that's going to go with this at all. So I might have to... I might have to end up pulling another piece of paper. Okay, so there's my sketch. I'm going to try to bust out a two-page spread. And like I said, this is such a basic, simple design. So I think I can easily do that. I'm just going to do these three clusters and my journaling. I don't know how I'm going to fit all that, but we're going to make it work. Okay, so for alphas, well, this didn't take me long to pick out because I don't have any type of vintage. I'm trying to find a red, that ain't going to work. I'm trying to find a brown that would fit that time frame, you know, that era, that, that wasn't going to work. So I found these three choices, and I really don't know if I like any of them. I mean, this, this style font reminds me of that time frame, so I might just have to go with the basic black, but guess what? I can guarantee I'm probably not going to have all the letters, which is a story. I have this cream... And I just had pulled out the collection and I went to my bin to see if I find anything that would fit this collection. Now, this has like a map type that, you know, since this was all around the town, one of those would work. I don't have time to think about that right now. I'm going to have to decide that later <laughs> after I figure out a title. So, I think that was it. Other than, what am I going to do for embellishments? Well, I have these stickers, these labels, so I know that's going to make the cut, you know. And then I have these other elements that if I wanted to start some cluster bases, but you, well, see now there's some, there's some plain. I could, you know, use that as a circle punch. And uh, yeah, okay, there we go. Because that would be too much pattern. I can't keep doing floral on top of floral on top of floral. So maybe I get a circle punch out. And uh, I think I might have to do this over. I think I'm getting a little too flustered here. Um, it's just that, you know, Charleston was so beautiful, but sometimes when I look at some of the photos, I, I get I, I get sad. But anyways, okay. And then I have these Fiskar sponges, Fiskar sponges that I thought would give me some elements. Maybe I could find some, uh, like with this basic brown. Oh, wouldn't that be a good mat though? I wonder if I would have two of them. Okay, so I'm going to probably have to put a couple more sheets of paper. And so for embellishments, I thought, I'm. what am I going to do? I don't know what colors I'm going to use. So I just picked out black, and I just went got two color boxes. And I'll talk about more of my color bins. And so this is my lumpy and bumpy black bin, and this is like die cuts and stickers type thing. And there's just oh, a whole variety. But I was talking to my sister on the phone while I was playing with this stuff, and I pulled this out. And I had got this for a pocket letter I did for Ramona. And honest to goodness, does this not make you think of like a carriage? You know, when you're doing those carriage rides? So, um, I'm not going to do it on this page, but I already know. And when I did Ramona's pocket letter, and I just mailed it the other day, I actually was just going to give this to my sister, or I was just going to put it in a, a donate bin, because I thought, I'll never use this on anything. And here it is. I thought, I could use this on some photos that when we actually took the carriage ride because that fringe reminds me of that carriage. So just, you just never know, do you? You just never know. So I have some black elements in here. I think that's what I have to do. I'm gonna have to just focus on these colors of the florals and then my embellishments are gonna have to be black based because it's gotta be quick. It's gotta be something. And I gotta do a two page spread. So I will come back. Thanks for sticking with me and all that tangent and thought process and getting a little choked up there. Okay, I shall return.
as I was working on this page, I thought I would give a couple quick tips when you're working on a two page spread or if you're working with four by six photos that's going across the, the landscape of your page. And so when you're working with your left hand page and you're dealing with four by six photos, start with your photo placement here and work your way over. Okay, and why is that? Because no matter what, I'm gonna flip this over. You see this overhang? You see that overhang? That happens because I don't know why. They're all four by six photos. This is a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. You think it would all match up. It never does. So when you're working on your left hand page of your double spread, make sure you work from your left and work your way over when it comes to your photos because if you have any overhang or any kind of things that don't match up it's going to be on the inside spine of your album and it's less noticeable than if it's over here now on your right hand page okay you want to do the exact opposite you want to start here on the right and then work your way over because then I'll see if I can line these up they're not adhered and we're going to see if they match up on this side. And no, well, yeah, almost. There might be a tiny overhang. So again, on the right-hand page, you're going to work here and work your way in. Because if you have anything that doesn't match up, always want it on the inside of your pages. Because that is the side that's near your spine. And it's less noticeable. Because, you know, when you flip a page, okay? So that's a little tip. Work from here, work over here and work over when you're dealing with those four by six because for whatever reason <laughs> things just don't match up same way when you're dealing with papers if you're going to have a side that doesn't match up always make sure it's the inside and if you're working with a double page spread you know it's going to be this okay and then on this if there's anything that doesn't match up because sometimes papers just don't match up let it be on the inside now when you're working with a single page layout you really don't know how that's going to be placed in your page. So you just wing it. <laughs> that's just a tip I've learned over the years. And then another tip I wanted to say is when you're dealing with patterns that have a slight text and you can see a slight text, I'll bring us closer in this pattern. Make sure you pay attention before you adhere that your writing is not upside down. And sometimes we get so busy putting a page down in our patterns, we don't really look, look at our patterns and you want to make sure your text is never upside down and sometimes that means you're you're looking at some things pretty close but you can see now i have had patterns where the text has been one way and at the bottom of the page it's another way so nobody would probably notice that but if you can it's just one of those little details pay attention to your text and make sure it's not upside down when you adhere it to your page so those were a couple little tips okay i'll be back Okay, I'm back with my finished page, or what I should say is pages, because yes, I did. I got a two-page spread done. And of course, if you look at my sketch, it was an easy design. I really just had two patterns that spanned across, and then I took my four by six photos, which there were six, and since I didn't cut them down, that spanned the whole way across. So that took up, I mean, that took up a lot of the room on my page. And so again, it had to be a simple design because I had to get it done. Now, how long did this take me? I would say about an hour and then my journaling because I wanted to look up a couple things because when I when I journal about places I've seen or you know towns and things like that I like to get a little bit of history and so I looked that up just to make sure that I remembered everything correctly so I just took this red pattern and I put it at the top to give it weight at the top since I had these photos that created so much weight at the bottom and then I just added this washi which to me oh it just reminds me of the wrought iron. And once again, I'm using my product to convey my feelings of where what it felt like on this day when I was seeing these, this architecture. And so I'll show you here. That's what that looked like. And it, I'm pretty sure it came from the Dollar Tree. I'm hoping I'm not incorrect, but that's what I seem to think. It was a few years ago. Um, I think that Dollar Tree washi they sell now is not really worth a dollar um, but even with this it just it was beautiful and it just brought forth that wrought iron that you see so much in the town of Charleston and so with that I had to take washi to secure the washi <laughs> 
because again it's just you know sometimes washes just don't stick so even though I used um, washi to cover up my braids I also used that washi to help my washi stick to the background isn't that funny but sometimes and that's what happens so with my title I really couldn't come up with a title so sometimes what I'll do is when I'm having trouble coming up with a title uh, or something of when I visited somewhere I'll go to Bing and so I put in Charleston architecture and it came up in one article it said old character and I thought that's exactly what I'm gonna call it because if you remember the prompt today was about old and I'll talk about that in just a minute and so of course you know when I'm using my font and I decided to go with this black font because of my choices I thought this would you know again help me convey my story a little bit better I had to play doctor and didn't have any L's, didn't have any E's, and so I had to, you know, cut them apart, and oh, that's always so much fun, isn't it? But I did want to say is when you're doing surgery on your alphas, it's always good to use a wet adhesive, and then you can put them together, and they will, they you won't be able to see that you had cut them apart if you use some wet adhesive and try to get them, you know, as close as you can. You know, no one's going to really look that close, so that's just one way to do that. So for my journaling, I printed out on craft because I had already so much color and I didn't want to introduce anything else and I didn't want red, didn't want this green and I didn't want the this dark brown. So I just went with craft because that's always acts as a buffer. And I, this word photography was just kind of laying in my desk in a little dish and so I saw it and I just added it right onto that. So even with my font choice, and I don't know if you can see this, even with my font choice, I made sure I used something that reminded me of that, of the feel of Charleston. And what else? I have so many notes here. Honestly, that's my notes because I have the raccoon syndrome. Okay, with my clusters, you see I just went with three clusters because, again, that's what they showed on the sketch and I knew it was going to have to be quick. I didn't have time to really just play. Um, so I decided on a couple elements for my clusters and then what I did, there's a doily and a, um, a circle that I just cut in half and a sticker and some, you know, leaves and a word, a word sticker and a bread and I just replicated the same thing on the opposite page because I just didn't have you know today was just one of those days I just couldn't come up with anything new so I just used what I already had in the other clusters and what I wanted to show with this cluster here was there was an actual person in this photo and I didn't want to see that person because all my other photos they don't you know they're people free and so I just took and I strategically put this cluster here so I could cover him up and that's what I did. And again, I just used those leaves that's from this Tim Holtz dye. It's called Spring Greenery. And that is one of my favorite leaf dyes. So love that I could cover up that person because <laughs> you know you just don't want some some elements so you know if you have people or things you don't want in a photo think about how you can strategically you know use a cluster to your benefit and cover that up and then I wanted to say one thing because I just wasn't getting the creative juices going today I think it's because I just had too much on my plate I wanted to say when you're working with clusters and you're not quite sure of how you're going to place everything and where they're going to go use um, a wet adhesive and I like this mono it just gives you a little bit of wiggle room till you figure out where you're going to exactly place things so I love that mono I love these are my two these are my go-to's I, I have plenty in stock <laughs> I always have at least four or five sometimes up to six at a time in each one of those because I love having that in stock and so with these little black little gemstones um, it kind of reminded me again of, of the feel of what people would wear at that time and I wanted to recommend these Kaiser craft rhinestones you get a hundred in a pack I think these are so worth the money and they don't seem like they fall off the pay, pay off the packaging um, and then when you put them on pages they stick very well so I really like those really and that black one well it can go with so many topics so with the font today it was throwback Thursday so anything to do with old old photograph whatever and I literally took that and and this is what I what I like about load is that you can use the prompt a little you can use it a lot or you can just go off prompt and you don't have to use it at all so what I did was I used photos that were was talking about an old subject you know some old architecture I used an old sketch this was 2008 I used an old product which was Daisy D's <laughs> you know and they quit making paper like 2008 so this this paper 
is over 10 years old. And then also I went old school and I used a two page spread. So I literally took the word old and I not only did it in my, my topic, my theme, I also did it in my supplies and also my technique. So had fun with that. And I think that was basically it. Um, like I said, I just, whatever I used in one cl cluster, I just basically went ahead and did it in the other. So I will have to say if I was not on a time crunch, I probably would add a few more things maybe up in this area. But that's one thing I love about load. You have to make quick decisions and go with it. And I will not revisit this page and do it, you know, add more to it. When I'm done today, it's done. The last thing that was on my notes that I wanted to mention was, you know, since I have been scrapbooking 17 days in a row and I have 17 pages completed, the one of the things that keeps going through my mind is that, you know, the more you scrapbook, the faster you become. You know, that's just you get into the rhythm and the rhyme. But also, too, you know, you get to know your product more. You need to know what you know what you have. And then you also see what's not working in your space or what you have bought that you're not using. Now, granted, I am working on fast pages. I am on a every day. I'm on a time crunch and so there's some things like I don't bring out my stamps I don't really bring out my dies too much I really don't bring out embossing folders so you know you can revisit that stuff later when you have more time but then since you're here's I guess what I want to say is the more you scrap the less you'll shop okay and I'll talk more about that in my spending freeze video coming up and so also too, the things I noticed having kits ready having sketches at hand been a huge help and then also too, I keep every at the end of every day, I keep looking at my pages and I think, you know, you really don't need a lot of product to make a nice page. And I keep, that keeps going through my head. Of course, that's been going through my head for some time and it's probably why I've decided to go on a spending freeze for this year. But again, I'll talk about that in another video. So keep scrapping. Even if you don't have time to create a page, just keep getting in there organizing. Keep writing down ideas. Keep uh, taking photos. Keep printing photos. Just keep the process going even if you don't have time to sit and actually play. So that was the last thing I wanted to say. I'll bring this a little cl closer because I know these pages are hard to see when you're doing a, you know, a 12 by 24 for format. I did move my journaling up as I was sitting here looking at it. It just was bugging me. So, you know, sometimes you just never seem to be done with the page. But anyways, okay, that's all I have. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for, and if you've watched all 17 videos, well, you rock, okay? Thank you so much for the great comments and come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to learn. Bye.